So when resolution seems almost impossible, fairness can come from a surprising source and it can be very unexpected. Today, I wanna to read to you a fairy tale. I love fairy tales. And I thought this might bring the point home. I'm Lily Vasileff and I'm president of Wealth Protection Management and I'm a divorce financial expert and I work with clients and professionals across the country. So bear with me. And the title of the fairy tale is called The Donkey and the Rock. A very long time ago, somewhere in the faraway land of Tibet, away so high that it seemed a little bit nearer to the sky than any other land, in one corner was a country governed by a very just man. He was noted in all parts of the dominion for his fair judgment in all cases. And in the city where this good king lived and had his home, but two poor men. Now both were very good men and they did the very best they could every single day. And each had an old mother to support. One day, one of the men started to a village high up in the mountains, carrying a jar of oil, selling it as he went. And walking along, he grew very tired and set his jar of oil on a rock. And then he sat and he rested for a while. As he sat there, his neighbor came down from the mountain, driving his donkey in front of him. And there were two big loads of wood stacked on each side of this poor little donkey, which almost entirely covered him. He didn't happen to see the jar. So he came too near and he knocked it off and he broke it and he spilled all the oil. Now the man who owned the oil was very angry indeed. And the man who owned the donkey said it wasn't his fault who had done the damage, it was the donkey. So they quarreled and they quarreled and they kept on quarreling. And the man who owned the oil said he couldn't afford to lose it as it was all he had in the world to sell for food and to support his mother. And it wasn't his fault that the jar was broken. So they both went to the king who questioned them very carefully about the matter and finally said that he couldn't see that either one of them was to blame. They were both very good men. They took care of their old mothers and they were honest in all of their dealings. And as far as he could see, the ones who were at fault were the donkey and the rock. And so he would judge them. So the little donkey was led into prison, with chains around his legs and his neck, and five of the king's men went out to sent, were sent out to find the rock. And the king ordered it all wrapped up with chains and he tied it to the prison door. Now, by the time the news of this very strange case and the queer doings of the king were spreading through the city. And when people heard that their great king was having a trial about a donkey and a rock, well, they thought he'd surely gone mad. So the next morning, the king announced by his runners throughout the city that the case would be tried. And the idea that a donkey and a rock could have a trial in court was more than people could even begin to understand. But early the next day, every single person in the city was at that courtyard to see the result of the trial. Now, when the time arrived, the judge came and he took his seat and he instructed the doorkeepers to shut and lock all the gates, thus locking in everybody. And then he proceeded to pronounce his judgment on the case. Well, as you all very well know, there is no law by which a donkey and a rock can be judged. So why have you all come to see such an absurd thing? Now, because of your curiosity in this manner, every single one of you shall pay a half cent before you can leave. While well, the people looking at each other, very much ashamed and glad to get out, handed over this bit of money and slipped through the gate. And the cash taken in this way was given to the man who had lost the oil, so he was happy. The debt was paid, so the other man was happy and the donkey and the rock went free. When you need a creative solution, Come look me up. I'm Lily Vassler.